Hi guys! In this tutorial we are going to make this cool looking tentacles effect by using Niagara system. Before we start, I recommend you to download the latest Unreal Engine version, for now it's 5.1, and you can create an empty project from template. In our case, third person view template would be great for effect preview. Now let's go to the project, and let's create an empty Niagara system with name NS underline tentacles. By pressing E button we will open a selection window and select an empty emitter from template. After that let's add some burst spawning particles and for simple preview let's spawn 10 particles. Inside initialize particle we can set sprite size mode to 5 for better look on viewport grid. For example, we want them to spawn uniformly from 0 to 100 across x-axis. For this, let's make a set module in particle spawn panel, set the particle position, and to leave the simulation position, let's make add vector to position. In first input set the same simulation position. Next vector value we will break to three float variables by setting a make vector function. Now we can see that we can move our particles across x-axis. In Niagara system, we have a unique parameter called normalized execution index, which returns executing number of each particle, but interpolated between 0 and 1. After that, we can scale it up to 100 in scale field, so we can see that all particles spawned on their position depending on their index. Particle with 0 index spawns on zeros, particle with last index spawns on 100 by x. We can see that there is a small offset according to the grid. It's happening because zero particle also included. Therefore, if we set 11 particle to burst, all particles will spawn directly on their intended position. Zero on zero, first on 10, 20, 30, 40, etc. On this stage, we can already set ribbon renderer. And let's create a simple material for it. Call it M underline tentacles. For this tutorial, a simple particle color will be enough. Then connect RGB to base color, save the material, go back to Niagara system, and assign this new material to our ribbons. Let's set ribbon width to 10. And since it's now a flat plane by default, in ribbon renderer module, you can change the shape to a tube with 8 subdivision levels. After that, we can set a curve for ribbon width and change parameter in curve index from normalized age to execution index, because normalized age is not suited to us right now. And let's scale the curve up to 20 or even then. Afterwards, we need to make our particles not to die after their lifetime has elapsed, even if their lifetime is zero. To make this, we have to go to particle state and uncheck this field, which enabling particle death after their lifetime has elapsed. And to make our emitter do not spawn any additional particles, let's change its life cycle to self loop behavior to once and loop duration to infinite. This causes our emitter spawn particles once and exists until we command it to destroy itself. We can add velocity and set random velocity by random range vector. Let's say by y axis from minus 20 up to 20. And we immediately see that ribbon calculates in wrong order. Not from zero to last particle, but with some random offset. That would be more noticeable if we disable ribbon deletion for a while. So we can see that zero particle is not the first one in our ribbon. To fix that, we need to make another parameter set. And if we type ribbon, we can see ribbon link order parameter. Let's simply set the same normalized index for this parameter that we used before. 
Now we can see clearly that our zero particle is very first in ribbon and last particle is the last. After that we have to make zero particle always keep its place on zeros in the middle of simulation position. Let's create a scratch module inside particle update and add particle position and simulation position inside our get node. Now let's compare. If our current particle has zero index, then we have to assign to it the simulation position. Otherwise, it's assigning the same position, so it passes through this module without changes. Add equal node and execution index. That means if our execution index equals zero, then it goes to if with boolean condition and position parameter on inputs and outputs. Connect boolean output to condition. Overall, if our particle index is zero, it goes to true and takes the simulation position data. Otherwise, it goes to false and transmit the same position from input. After that, in set node add particle position parameter and connect condition output inside. Press save and let's go back to system view. Also, we can rename the scratch module to something like zero to zero. As you can see now, all particles spawn at random position and zero particle always keeps the same place. On the next step, we have to protest the position of particles from child to parent, which means that first particle has to strive to zero, second to one, third to second, and etc. Let's create another scratch module for that and call it velocity to parent. First things first, we need to get position of current particle and its parent. So current particle's parent is a particle with index minus one. That means we need a particle position parameter and then create a particle attribute reader. If you drag a wire from reader, you will find a node called get position by index. Then in attribute field type position. This node reads position of particle from reader according to index you entered. Then we place execution index and subtract one unit from it. Because we need minus first particle, which is its parent. Let's send this data to get position by index. And then we are going to need some extra local variables. The first one has position type call it parent position. And the second one will be float, which will contain distance to parent and name it the same way. Therefore, we transfer data from get position by index to our local parent position variable. And to calculate the distance between particles, there is a simple node called distance to which we attach both positions and send it to our second local variable. On the next step, let's create another get set nodes to make our graph a little bit cleaner and readable. Here we have to calculate velocity, which we add to getter. Then add both of our local variables. Also, we'll need two controlling variables on input. The first one will be float. Let's call it fly speed. This variable will control how fast child particle should fly to its parent. Another float variable will be max distance. 
which determines how far a particle can fly away from its parent. Let's set if with boolean condition and vectors on inputs and outputs because we are going to control velocity. Now we need to recreate this condition. If current particle flies further from its parent, then max distance we've set. Velocity should be modified and become directed back to the parent position. Let's create greater than node. If distance to parent is greater than our max distance, then we calculate the velocity. Otherwise, particle is in acceptable range, so there is no need to change velocity and it goes to false. We can sort hierarchy for a little bit in getter. Also, we need to add position parameter here because we need to subtract parent position from current particle position and normalize this difference. As a result, we will have a normalized vector which is oriented to parent. Let's change an order of variables and then multiply this value by fly speed and add this oriented vector to velocity and send it to true in condition. In the moment when particle is out of range, we set by max distance. Then we can make an additional multiplier from distance. From distance to parent, we subtract a max distance and take its absolute value. Then send it to multiplier as well. Let's clean up our wires a little bit. Inputs remain the same. And let's take a look on our emitter. Here we have to set the name of our actual emitter because attribute reader have to take data from its own emitter. And by default, let's set fly speed to 10 and max distance to 10 as well. Finally, we can see that something more interesting is happening here. But since velocity is calculating for each particle, it's trying to fly back to its parent. And that's happening with every single particle. Therefore, every next particle's velocity is multiplying exponentially. To prevent this, we can create another setter for velocity. And again, multiply already existing velocity by float by 0 0.5. That means that every step, velocity cuts in half to avoid very big velocity values. Now, if we take a look to our system, particles stopped flying around. And for more visibility, we can add some curl noise. Then set noise strength high enough, because as you remember, velocity cuts twice every update. Now you can see that something logical is finally happening. Also, we can turn back a tessellation in ribbon renderer. And in curl noise, we can reduce frequency for a little bit and turn on the noise spanner to make an animated offset for noise. Now let's save everything, go to the level and take a look how this system behaves on scene. As you can see, all particles are trying to fly back to their parents, no matter how far they fly away. Even more, as they move away from their parent, particles with the same speed try to move back to their parent. 
no matter how hard we try to separate them. We can go back to our system and set a custom velocity after the moment where we split it up. Let's duplicate an already existing velocity module and change it from multiplying to adding. In first input we set the same velocity again and for example we want our tentacles to hang down by 200. Save, go back to level. Particles fly down too hard. Let's set a little bit lower value like 50. And we can see that velocity calculates in this case as well. Also, I want to notice that we need to disable an interpolated spawning parameter, because in this case, particles can behave a little bit different and try to reach out world origins due to velocity counting. In addition, for better preview, in case you created a third-person view project, we can open characters blueprint and right here add our new Niagara system. Let's attach it to skeletal mesh and select the bone. Make it pelvis, for example. And set our new system inside. In fact, from here we can set a custom velocity to our system or even remove it at all by setting zeros. Then if we go to level and press play, we can see that our tentacle is attached to character. The same way we can multiply tentacles by duplicating system in blueprint. Compile. But since we don't have any individual offset for curl noise, all particles will line up in a single row according to the noise and overlap each other. To fix that, let's open up and extend curl noise module. And here we can see a bunch of parameters. And in this particular case, it would be enough to use a random integer seed. If we play it again, we can see that our tentacles already have a small position offset. Let's add some more noise. And you can also increase the length of tentacle by increasing particles quantity. Delete a sprite renderer, because we don't need it anymore. Let's go to level, press play. And it seems more organic and we have some randomness. Let's add then some color in initializer. As you can see, color is assigned as well. The best part of this system is that no matter how many particles we will set to spawn, every single particle will follow its parent. Of course, the complexity depends on your memory, performance and technical requirements, but this method still requires a small amount of resources because it's still a simple Niagara system. Also for more beauty result, you can set cast shadow for systems inside the blueprint. Let's start again so we can see that shadows are also displayed. During play mode we can simply customize some parameters inside Niagara system and reduce frequency to make tentacles smoothly fly around.
Then if in velocity to parent module we set higher values for fly speed and decrease maximum distance, our particles will squish faster and have more fixed length. But if we set too high values for fly speed, for example 50, maybe even 200, we can see an opposite effect when particles fly back to parent on very high speed. Therefore, I recommend you to hold this value maximum up to 100. As you can see, even 100 is not working for us. Let's hold this parameter under 50 by default. I think it should be more than enough. Let's play a little with noise parameters, strength, frequency and panner as well. Finally, for cooler preview, we can set skeletal mesh hidden in the game. After all, that will look like a cool flying tentacles creature. Well, you've finally did it. Thanks for your attention and time that you spent. Also, I would really like to read what you would do better, so feel free to share your experience down in the comments. Talking about future videos, this tutorial is an introductory part of more complex and more optimized systems. So I would really appreciate if you would leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Do not miss any upcoming tutorials.